Hello everyone, this is Lisa Topelman waiter speaking and Lars Topelman on the camera giving you a tour of the exhibition Hanseatic, The Life and Work of Karsten and Ellen Topelman on display at the Miller Art Museum. In 1971, Karsten and Ellen's brother Topelman bought a property in the heart of historic Ephraim, Wisconsin. The property was originally a rooming house and a resort known as the Larson Cottages, built in 1906 by the Larson family who were Swedish immigrants. The quaint property would soon be transformed by the Topelmans to become a place that they would build their life together, a home for their family and where they would create the Hanseatic Art Gallery the establishment that would feed their artistic endeavors and where they would pursue their careers as professional artists over the next 50 years. The gallery was named Hanseatic in reference to Ellen's city of birth in Hamburg, Germany, which was one of the major ports of the medieval merchants guild, the Hanseatic League. Eventually, the gallery would be draped in signature red and white striped awnings, symbolic of Hamburg's Hanseatic flag. The youngest of three children, Lisa Topelman once asked Karsten why he had never painted a portrait of his own beautiful gallery. Taking his daughter's suggestion, he painted one version but sold it right away, much to Lisa's displeasure. So Karsten then painted this version just for her. In this exhibition, we follow along on the life and work of Karsten and Ellen Topelman. It is the story of a partnership and a great love, a family, a town, and two great individual talents. This painting is called Our Village by Ellen and it was painted in about 1981. Ellen loved the town of Ephraim where they lived, always calling it Our Village or referring to the town as the Pearl of the Peninsula. Later, this affectionate reference would inspire her son Lars and his wife Monique to name their business a wine cottage currently operating adjacent to the property, The Pearl. Within the activity in this painting, each of the Topelman family members is playfully hidden. Ellen also included friends getting married, people dining at Wilson's restaurant, and many other miniature surprises. This charming and personalized portrait of life in the village would become one of the most successful reproduction prints for the gallery. And here we have Ephraim Beach by Ellen, painted at circa 1995. Ellen was enamored with Ephraim Beach and was particularly inspired by the view from higher ground where her favorite buildings and the two iconic church steeples could be seen. In the foreground, Ellen depicted her son Lars as he plays and enjoys the day with his first son, Karsten. Good morning, Ephraim. This is a painting that is on loan from Martha Bisacci and was painted around 2000. Martha was a collector and she approached Karsten one afternoon asking if there was anything new he was working on. Karsten took her to the painting studio where they looked through the collection of works in progress. Martha was struck by the scene of Ephraim viewed from an imagined porch. Karsten was hesitant to sell because although he had already framed the work, he continued to visit it from time to time and develop it simply because he enjoyed adding more and more detail. But Martha's enthusiastic response to the painting convinced Karsten that it should belong to her. And as with many of his paintings, Karsten playfully hid a lighthouse somewhere in the composition for the viewer to discover. This painting was probably one of the earliest portrayals that Ellen would do of life in Ephraim, a subject that would continue to inspire her throughout her career. In this depiction, Ellen reimagines the founding days and rustic beginnings of the village built by the Moravians. In the upper left corner, she indicates the year of 1885. Wilson's, the iconic ice cream parlor depicted here in one of its early incarnations by Ellen in about the year 1998. 
The location, first utilized in 1906 as an ice cream and fine candy shop, has been owned by multiple families and hosted many different businesses, including a real estate agency, a bank, and a general store. Alan loved to tell the stories of each of the characters in the painting, who can be seen coming and going around this pillar of the community. Alan endearingly referred to this miniature, the miniature figures included in her township scenes as her little people. One day, a couple came into the gallery and becoming enamored with the Wilson's painting, they asked to purchase the artwork. Alan told them while the painting was not for sale, the actual Wilson's restaurant was for sale. So in another revival, the couple bought Wilson's and added the iconic red and white striped awnings inspired by Ellen's painting. And this is on loan from the Ephraim Historical Foundation. Ephraim in winter from circa 1998. This is on loan from Karen Malzahn collection. A peaceful winter sun bathes the view of the historic Hillside Hotel in golden melting light. It is framed on either side by the two church steeples as the light falls languidly down slope, illuminating the surface of the water below. In this scene, Car Karsten captures the beauty and serenity of Ephraim in the winter. Like his wife, Ellen, Ephraim was Karsten's very favorite subject. And over the years, he painted the town from every point of view in all seasons, at all times of the day, and in a variety of media. He never tired of Ephraim's beauty, nor the inspiration it offered. An early self-portrait inspired Karsten to portray each of the members of the Topelman family with their favorite possessions. While Karsten would continue to explore self-portraiture over the years, this was one of the first and only times he would paint his wife and children. Ellen with her favorite zebra outfit, and Tanya with her favorite doll, Karina. And Lars with his favorite self-built airplane, Lars 747. And Lisa with her favorite stuffed animal, Arfi. The Celebration of St. Martin, painted circa 1990 by Ellen. In this scene, Ellen depicts the German tradition of St. Martin, which takes place on November 11th each year. In celebration of St. Martin's generosity, Lantern parades are held symbolically to ensure the saint can find his way home. From 1983 to 2000, Karsten and Ellen spent several months a year in Rodenburg Alp der Tauber, a medieval town in Bavaria and their favorite town in Germany. Rodenburg had not suffered the bombings of the world wars, so its medieval spirit and stunning architecture remained intact. Winter Joy from 1993. This is one of Ellen's iconic winter scenes where the townsfolk and families enjoy frivolity in an imaginary village of old Europe. Ellen infuses the painting with a joy through the activity of the people dressed in beautiful garments in harmonic celebration of the last days of the winter sun. The fashion of these little people was an era an area of focus for Ellen, having her background in fashion design, the detail that brings the artworks to life. The winter skating scene was a common motif for Ellen, and she made numerous versions set in fictional European towns, but also set in the town of Ephraim. This painting is untitled and unfinished, indicated by a few outlined figures and the lack of a signature. The Wedding from circa 1991. Ellen's painting techniques and style are heavily influenced by the Northern Renaissance 
and likens to the works of Peter Bruegel the Elder in particular. She, like Bruegel, created artworks that are visually engrossing and depict the celebrations of the common mass. Family milestones, spiritual holidays, and seasonal celebrations seen from the wide angle are all elements found in Ellen's compositions. In this scene, Ellen depicts a wedding at the moment the family bursts out of the door of the main chapel in Rotenburg auf der Tauber in celebration. All the townsfolk have come to watch to bless the newlywed couple and share in social unison. This scene was often reproduced by the gallery for wedding invitations. Tenerife by Karsten Topelman from circa 1988. From 1983 to 2000, Ellen and Karsten would spend the winter months in Tenerife on the Canary Islands. The couple would take long walks throughout the town and paint it together en plein air, often painting from this favorite vista looking out to Playa El Boyoyo. As a boy, Karsten's first artistic influence came while accompanying his father on their many family hikes. His father commonly brought along paper, watercolors, and brushes, and would pause to paint scenes that captured his eye. These early influences informed Carson's own work, and painting on plein air would be an activity that he continued to share with his family throughout his life, and a technique where he excelled as a painter. A scene from Tenerife in the Canary Islands depicting Karsten and Ellen's favorite private gardens above Playa El Boluyo, where they spent much of their time during their stay on the islands. Marseille from 1965. In the 1950s, previous to moving to the United States, Karsten spent time touring Europe in the footsteps of Cezanne, Van Gogh, and Picasso, whom he cites as amongst his major influences. Spending time in the south of France, Karsten took photos of the marinas in Marseille, from which he would later paint this scene. A collaborative piece by Karsten and Alan Topelman the Fingston Festival, Arrival of the Mayor from 1986. As a couple, Carson and Ellen shared many interests and pursuits in common while always maintaining their individual perspective. It was a fairly regular practice for them to either work on one painting collaboratively or individually paint the same scene in their own way. In this scene, Carson and Ellen conjoin their talents in one painting with Karsten depicting the town and buildings and Ellen contributing the activity and figures. While Ellen typically painted in acrylic, Karsten painted in oil. They could agree to use watercolor in their collaborative works. This scene represents the arrival of the mayor who sponsored the annual Fingston Pentecostal Festival, which celebrates the 10 days of ascension in Rotenburg auf der Tauber each May. The Topelmans were celebrated artists in the city of Rotenburg auf der Tauber. Dressing up and promenading the streets, people would whisper, die Künstler kommen, meaning, here come the artists. Portrait of Karsten Topelman by James Ingwersen from 1980. The individual portraits of Karsten and Ellen were done by James J. Ingwersen during one of the many collective drawing events held at the Ingwersen studio. Between 1975 and 1980, James Ingwersen hosted open door sketching sessions in the barn, attended by a fairly regular cast of Door County artists, including Karsten and Ellen, along with other come and go participants. The models were scheduled by James' wife, Phyllis, and it was typical for the artist participants to take turns playing the role of the model. The portrait of Karsten resides in the permanent collection of the Ephraim Historical Foundation, a gift of James J. Ingwersen. The portrait of Ellen resides in the permanent collection of the Miller Art Museum, a gift 
of Lars and Lisa Topelman in 2021. The Knitting Lesson by Ellen Sprogoy Topelman, courtesy of the Ephraim Historical Foundation. An intimate moment between a mother and a daughter where talents and skills are lovingly passed down and shared between the parent and child. The scene is reflective of how the Topelmans lived with their very own family. The lace curtains, the wood paneled walls, and the cloth table were recurring themes in Ellen's interior family scenes, which appear infused with her own sentiments and experiences. The announcement by Ellen Sproge Topelman, courtesy of Karen Malzahn. While it is a mystery what announcement will be made and who exactly will be celebrating, as a viewer, it is hard not to share in the, in the suspense and excitement of the subjects gathered tightly around the table. With all of the characters dressed in their finest, a reflection of Ellen's early career in fashion design, we can only assume this is a major milestone in the lives of those in the scene. Adding a personal anecdote, Ellen models the two children eavesdropping from behind a door after herself and her brother as children who were meant to be sleeping but are up late spying on this special celebration. In almost all of Ellen's paintings, she included her favorite animal, a dog. Here in the foreground, the family dog is as enthusiastic and as joyful as the others. This painting is called Die Stube, or The Living Room, by Ellen Sproge Topelman from circa 1988. When Ellen wasn't painting the social unison of collective celebration from the wide angle point of view, she was zooming into cozy interior spaces to depict the shared private moments of a family. Often drawn from her own memories growing up in Germany, Ellen places these family scenes in an imagined past. The viewer is brought into the center of the tight knit interactions between family members whether it be an everyday moment enjoying an evening together or one of the milestone moments in a family's life. The Town Hall Portal of Rotenburg Auf der Tauber by Carson Topelman from 1989. On a winter's evening in Rotenburg Auf der Tauber, Germany, a warm, inviting light shines from the Town Hall Portal. On the right, the barred window glows, inviting us to adventure in and make our way up the stairs. While Karsten had a wide variety of interests when it came to his subjects, one thing that remains consistent was his ability to infuse a scene with a comforting sense of time, place, and belonging. He leaves the viewer with the idea that there is more to the story and something unseen, which invites our imagination to explore. Self-Portrait Reflection by Karsten Doppelman, courtesy of Karen Malzahn from the year 2000. In this luscious still life of a purposefully placed tea urn, vase of yellow roses and teacup, Karsten showcases a favorite piece of the Topelman's extensive collection of Russian teacups, which they acquired while in St. Petersburg, Russia in the 1980s. The scene captures the viewer's attention with masterful realism and dynamic color relationships. But upon closer look, in the center of the tea urn, one can see a reflection of the artist in front of his easel, holding a painter's palette in hand. Like Ellen, who embedded hidden stories into the fray of her township scenes, Karsten enjoyed adding playful hidden elements to his paintings. On many occasions, Carson delighted in the reactions of gallery visitors or collectors when they found the hidden items. He would top off the experience by telling his visitor the story of what inspired him. Door County Farmhouse Window by Carson Topelman, courtesy of Dick Malzahn from the year 1990. As it was for Gerhard C.F. Miller, Door County's unique farmstead construction would be a source of lifelong inspiration for Karsten, who was particularly drawn to painting architectural subjects infused with a romantic sense of time and the promise of an idyllic rural lifestyle. 
Here, the late afternoon sun casts the flower box of brilliant red petunias and the lace curtains into the spotlight backdropped by the shadowy window, inviting us to peek around the corner. Door County Landscape with Squirrel by Karsten Topelman from the year 1993, courtesy of Karen Malzahn. In this classic Door County scene, Karsten depicts an aging abandoned farm truck as time helps it to converge with the environment around it. A sapling birch, Karsten's favorite tree, grows right through the front end of the vehicle, while the wildflowers seem to take no notice of the rusting squatter at all. Meanwhile, its presence has given the squirrel a great place to make a grand entrance. Colorado Landscape by Karsten Topelman from 1985, courtesy of Karen Malzahn. In 1983, Karsten traveled to Colorado and stayed with a family friend outside of Denver while Ellen traveled to Brazil. While in Denver, Karsten made friends and developed a strong bond with a local cowboy named Stanley, who owned a property with expansive views of the Rocky Mountains. One day, Stanley invited Karsten to drink coffee with him in his cabin, which had no running water. Inspired by the view, Stanley gave Karsten permission to go plein air painting on his property. Karsten created a collection of the Rocky Mountain vistas, and the two friends corresponded for many years after. Old Mailbox by Karsten Topelman, a watercolor from 1982, and Mailbox with Cardinal, a watercolor from 1982 by Tanya Topelman. Karsten and Ellen were their eldest daughter Tanya's first artistic teachers, and her style is a beautiful reflection of each parent's pursuit. Tanya worked in watercolor like her father, but also painted little people like her mother. Unlike Ellen's use of figures, Living in an idyllic past, Tanya depicted her little people in the modern day. Like Karsten and his father before, Tanya often accompanied her father en plein air painting in locations across Door County. Here, Karsten and Tanya represent their individual points of view of the same roadside mailbox, the imperfections of which are identifiable in each of the artworks. Tanya loved birds and painted them often. Similar to Ellen's continuous inclusion of her favorite animal, the dog, Tanya included a cardinal in almost every one of her paintings because the bird held special meaning to her. In Tanya's short career, she won an award at the Salon of School High School Art while attending Gibraltar High School and had a room of her artwork in the Hanseatic Art Gallery. She studied at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design and had early success selling her paintings at a gallery in Milwaukee. Tanya, a hugely talented and aspiring artist, tragically passed in 1983 at the age of 22. Self-Portraits by Karsten Topelman from the year 2010. These three portraits demonstrate Karsten's willing playfulness and vulnerability in his self-reflection. He allows the viewer to catch him in the act of taking himself lightly and enjoying his own charm, dressed in his favorite shirt and hat. We can assume the portraits were done on the same day or in the same brief time period as the color palette is consistent across the three works and he's wearing the same shirt in each of the portraits. Of the three, only one is a finished work indicated by the signature. While Karsten's subjects varied widely, he rarely painted the figure, preferring architecture, botanicals, and landscape subjects, but he often painted self-portraits throughout his career.